These are some of the stories coming up next here on Eyewitness News. The water level at Lake Houston is dropping fast and the city is ready to implement controls. Two workmen overcome by gas while working in River Oaks were saved by emergency medical technicians. Eyewitness News updates a story from last week about a possible new cure for cancer and a portion of the old Ellington Air Force Base becomes a Pasadena City golf course. We'll have these and other stories coming up next on Eyewitness News. When you're looking for a way to lighten your day, to brighten your day, think of fry. Flying away to the taste of yesterday, the old-fashioned flavor of fry. After zooming around, going up and down, put your feet on the ground and try. Floating up and away to the taste of yesterday, the old-fashioned flavor of fry. Every day, over a million people depend on Gulf for everything from gasolines and motor oils to a full line of quality Cruise Master tires, batteries, and accessories. Stop at Gulf. We'll help you get where you're going. Gulf, the stop that keeps America going. Why is everyone trying to kill this man? What terrible secret does he know? Chuck Norris is John T. Booker. Good guys wear black. One man against impossible odds. Good guys wear black. See, good guys wear black. Good guys wear black stars Friday throughout Greater Houston and the surrounding areas. Look for this ad. Dana Andrews stars tomorrow afternoon at 3. This is 13 Eyewitness News, Houston's choice for news, with Dave Ward and Jan Carson. The weather with Ed Brandon, and the sports with Bob Allen. Good evening, everyone. Dave Ward has the evening off. Two workmen were overcome by gas while making repairs at a River Oaks home this afternoon. Ambulance attendants found the two men lying on the floor unconscious. The EMTs didn't know what the workers had inhaled, but they knew it was something potent. One of the men still was in the basement. The other had struggled upstairs. Both were unconscious. David, get a truck with exhaust fan! Stand by. I just need to get my restriction fan. already got the heavy stuff. The men were working for Misher Airco Air Conditioning Company, repairing the air conditioning system in the home. The owner of the house is a Saudi Arabian businessman. He was not there. The only other person who was there was the maid. She was the one who reported the problem. That they were servicing the system, they had a leak, and they had charged it, and then all of a sudden they didn't know what happened to it. So apparently, I don't know, they might have had a leak there still that they didn't detect. Both men are hospitalized in stable condition. Noel Thurman at St. Joseph's Hospital, Guillermo de Alejandro at Herman. Dan Rosen, Eyewitness News. The demand for water in the Houston area continues to cause problems. The situation has gotten so bad that city officials are ready to implement an emergency water conservation ordinance that would provide for a $200 fine. The few rain showers we've had recently have been the only reasons the ordinance has not been adopted yet. The problem is that last month's plea by the city to conserve water has fallen on deaf ears. The summer sun is evaporating water out of Lake Houston at the rate of 25 million gallons a day. The surface water situation has not reached the acute stage yet. Nevertheless, officials are releasing some 60 million gallons of water a day from Lake Conroe, having it flow down the San Jacinto River into Lake Houston. Many of those who live on Lake Houston say they've not seen it this low in a long, long time. The pale shoreline and beached boats testify to the lack of lake water, the water used by the city of Houston. If we went for a week without rainfall, even these scattered showers that have been so welcome, we would be in trouble. We uh, would probably begin having pressure problems again, and that would cause concern for uh, the ability to fight fires. What steps would have to be taken? Well, there is an emergency ordinance that has been prepared uh, that would put forth a uh, mandatory 
conservation program. That we're hoping we won't have to use. We sincerely think that we might be able to make it through this summer without. The problem is even more serious with pressure from underground wells serving the west part of the county. The pumping system there is pumping 71 million gallons more a day than the design limit. The intermittent showers do help ease the lawn watering, but Lake Houston's water level is dropping faster than the water is being replaced, and it's obvious here more rain is needed. Sylvan Rodriguez, Eyewitness News, Lake Houston. Last Thursday, Eyewitness News reported exclusively on the development of a promising anti-cancer drug at St. Joseph's Hospital. The chief researcher who took massive amounts of the drug thymidine a week ago to test its safety tells me he has not experienced any side effects from that treatment. Bapino Giovanella, the chief researcher at the St. Joseph Cancer Research Laboratory, does not have cancer, but he was administered large amounts of thymidine over a 24-hour period last Thursday in a continuing effort to show that the drug is safe for human use. Research at St. Joseph's over the past two years has shown dramatic results when thymidine is administered to mice carrying human tumors. In most cases, the cancer disappeared. Doctors and researchers at St. Joseph's Hospital are currently in the process of seeking approval of the U.S. Food and Drug Administration to use thymidine on cancer patients, and they hope that the successful test on Dr. Giovanella will take them a step closer to getting that approval. Prosecutors presented videotape this afternoon in the Fort Worth bond hearing for oilman Cullen Davis, which showed Davis sitting in a car with David McCrory. This morning, tape recordings allegedly of conversations between Davis and McCrory were played in the courtroom. In one of those recordings, Davis discusses paying for the killing of the judge in his divorce trial and three other people as well. In Wharton, Texas, a three-woman, nine-man jury listened to the first day of testimony in the capital murder trial of Mary Lou Anderson. Anderson is killed, accused of hiring a hitman to kill her father and stepmother in Sugar Land. The 36-year-old woman, Mary Lou Anderson, pleaded not guilty to the charge. The bodies of her parents, Steve and Marjorie Anderson, were found in their home in Sugar Land last January 3rd. They had been shot in the head several times. One of the first witnesses, Joan Marsh, Mrs. Anderson's daughter, testified she had been the first one to see the bodies in the dining room. Their mouths had been gagged and their wrists bound with adhesive tape. The prosecuting attorney, Jack Salier, told the jury he could prove Mary Lou Anderson had bought a $10,000 insurance policy for her father and that she had hired someone to kill them because she was in dire need of money to keep from going to prison. Another witness, Harry Tubbs, said the defendant had asked him if he could get someone to kill her father and mother, that there was lots of money and land she would inherit. He said he learned later that the Andersons had been murdered. When the defendant called him, he recorded the conversation. That 25-minute tape was played back in court. Tubbs asked, quote, did you hear the shots? No, I turned the lights out on the car, on the back of it, where they couldn't see if they were Louisiana or Texas tags. He took me with him. I know that it was because he thought it was a trap he'd blow my brains away. He has someone watching my son and he was going to blow Stephen's brains away, end quote. Mary Lou Anderson cried quietly during parts of the testimony. The trial continues Thursday in State District Judge Neil Caldwell's court. This is Elma Barrera, Eyewitness News. In court action in Galveston, a jury was dead, has deadlocked on whether the son of the island city's police chief is competent to be punished for an aggravated kidnapping conviction. A Galveston judge then ordered another competency trial for 29-year-old Eddie Galvan, Jr. Two police officers were wounded in the incident, and Galvan still faces trial in connection with those shootings. An early morning apartment blaze has claimed the life of a five-year veteran of the Bryan Fire Department. That city's fire marshal said the man's body was found during cleanup operations at the Tropicana Apartments in Bryan. Firefighters say that no one saw 30-year-old Richard Lopez fall through the roof of the two-story building. Six other firefighters were treated for smoke inhalation or exhaustion. The Bryan Fire Department got help from as far away as Huntsville in battling that blaze. The fire took more than three hours to put out, and it destroyed more than three-quarters of the apartment project's 60 units. Pasadena's new municipal golf course, formerly part of Ellington Air Force Base, will open this Saturday. And now that city officials have the fairways, they say they like the runways, too. The golf course hadn't been used in more than two years when Pasadena took it over in April. The city paid nothing for it. It was valued at about $2 million, but it cost them a considerable amount to refurbish the rundown green. The course has only nine holes now. That'll soon be extended to a full 18. One reminder of its former days as an Air Force fairway is the hundreds of golf balls fished out of the two lakes by Mayor John Ray Harrison. He says he'll keep most of them, but with his game, they'll probably be back in the water in no time. 
the mayor kids about the radar tower that rises above the course. He says it's a huge golf ball put there to guide lost golfers to the green. But he confides he'd like to use it in earnest to guide planes into what he hopes may someday be the Pasadena Municipal Airport. When the president was here uh, a couple of months ago, he said that uh, uh, the rest of the base would remain in federal inventory and under the con control of GSA. I would just say this, certainly we need a municipal airport and if we could get it, we'll certainly strive to move in that direction. We certainly feel like, Ben, we've got a, a foothold on the base uh, that if we do an excellent job here and the federal government sees how we can actually uh, maintain this facility that uh, at least we'll get to maybe first consideration if something happens to the rest of the base. There's been no word from the government yet about the fate of the airport, but Harrison says he's still hoping that Pasadena may soon have rights to both the ground and the air at Ellington. Melanie Lawson, Eyewitness News at Ellington Air Force Base. There were some major changes in the U.S. airline industry today, and we'll tell you about them when Eyewitness News continues. Where does Houston Oiler running back Earl Campbell find comfort after a hard day of play? Let's ask Earl. I sleep on a Sealy mattress from Fingers. A famous Sealy Posturepedic, designed in cooperation with leading orthopedic surgeons for no morning backache from sleeping on a too soft mattress. Buy your Sealy Posturepedic mattress from Fingers, the world's largest independent Sealy dealer. Make yours a Subaru summertime. Subaru summertime. While you're cruising on down that old white oh, line. line. Every mile is a trip and style. style. Subaru gonna put a smile on you. Gonna put a smile on you. Gonna put a smile on you. Make yours a Subaru. A Subaru summertime. Are the savings great at Target's back-to-school sale? Draw your own conclusions. A Texas Instrument 48-function student calculator with four-key memory and automatic on-off switch, regularly $17.99, now $13.99. 70-page notebooks with wide or narrow rule, now just 29 cents each. Three big ballpoint pens, now 29 cents. For an exciting lesson in savings, don't miss the back-to-school sale at Target. When it's time to buy a new roof, stop and ask, is it made by Johns Manville? After all, nobody knows more about roofing than Johns Manville. Another good question, is it made with fiberglass? You see, fiberglass makes shingles as good a value as they are good looking. Because fiberglass lasts and lasts. It's fire resistant too. Need a roof? Stop and call this number to find who sells Johns Manville fiberglass shingles in your area. A Miami newspaper reports today that National Airlines and Pan Am will merge to thwart a takeover of National by Texas International Airlines. The merger will give Pan Am its long-sought domestic roots. Houston-based Texas International had already acquired more than 9% of national stock in its takeover attempt. If the merger between National and Pan Am is approved, it would be one of the largest in U.S. airline history. Meanwhile, there's news that Continental Airlines is expanding its operations at Houston's Intercontinental Airport. The company's executive vice president says there's even a slight possibility that the Los Angeles-based airline could eventually move its headquarters to Houston. Continental's top management team was in Houston to show off the airline's new flight attendant uniforms before an audience of flight personnel based here. The carrier spent $2 million designing and producing the uniforms for its 2,100 flight attendants. But they're spending money these days for more than just uniforms. Plans are already in the works for Continental to take over Phase 1 of the new Terminal C at Intercontinental Airport. And Executive Vice President Charles Buck says they'll spend $30 million, $2 million more than planned. In addition, a new $12 million maintenance facility and hangar is going up with expansion of flight kitchen services as well. Beyond that, the airline is considering the possibility of moving its headquarters from the West Coast to Houston. Houston is a growing, dynamic market. It'll be one of the great markets of the 80s. We all know that. I'm not telling you anything you don't know. Uh, we have a very substantial investment in Los Angeles. Whether, whether we could afford to back away from that investment, because I can tell you the city of Houston has been very great to us, would be very cooperative. Uh, you know, with us if, if we did make that decision. Buck says that even if Continental doesn't move its entire headquarters here, a good part of the airline's future growth will be in Houston. 
because he says Continental recognizes the growth potential of this city. Wes Sims, Eyewitness News at Intercontinental Airport. Houstonians may be getting a bit of a tax break soon. An ordinance is now being prepared that would eliminate the 1% city sales tax on utility bills. City councilmen appear ready to approve that ordinance by next month. State legislatures removed Texas's 3% utility tax during the special session. The new Metropolitan Transit Authority has come one step closer to buying a bus fleet. Houston City Council has approved in principle the agreement to sell Hutran to the MTA. Mayor McCon had negotiated that agreement several weeks ago. It still hasn't been signed and a definite sales price has not been established yet, but the entire fleet will probably go for about two and a half million dollars. Houston City employees are pressing for a pay raise despite the public furor over taxes. Today, the president of the Firefighters Association told the city council his men already have waited too long. The pay raise uh, uh, equity adjustment that was submitted to you uh, simply brings us up to a catch-up level that we were in 74 uh, through December of 77. So we ask that uh, some type of action be taken today, either passage of the uh, pay raise proposal or that a definite date be established that we can know when it's going to be enacted. Thank you very much. Tyra says he wants a pay raise of just over 7% for the firefighters. He says that will cost the council about $1.5 million for the rest of the year. Council will vote on the pay raises next week. Houston Police Chief Harry Caldwell today reacted angrily to an ABC network program aired last night which focused on the recent problems in the Houston Police Department. Caldwell called the program sensationalistic and slanted. The segment of ABC's 2020 program was titled Lawless Cops. The subject was police brutality, and the Houston Police Department received the most scrutiny for the cases of Joe Torres, Randall Webster, and Billy Joyves, who died in incidents involving Houston police officers. Chief Caldwell says reporter Geraldo Rivera slanted the story, refusing to talk to Caldwell, preferring instead to talk to fired officers. Seems patently unfair. As a matter of fact, seems a little bit cowardly that uh, this person wouldn't even walk into the station to ask the chief of police what his policies were, but intend uh, instead had these policies read by an officer that we had fired seven years ago for wrongdoing, and then quoted some policy out of a memograph sheet of paper by some patrolman in a police department. He had access to the policies of this department here. All he had to do was come in here one-on-one -on -one and ask me, and opted not to do so because uh, you got the distinct impression there was a great fear of the truth. They didn't want to know, the citizens to know, that these were the acts of individuals, not of a police department. Chief Caldwell says the ABC reporters accomplished what they set out to do, namely crucify the Houston Police Department. He says he has written to the network strongly objecting to the way the report was handled. A high-speed chase through the Heights area ended this morning when Houston police officers captured three youths who had escaped from a state reform school. Sergeant S.L. Sears says he spotted the youths in a speeding car near the intersection of Studemont and Interstate 10. Sears said when he tried to pull the youths over, they sped away from him. About 10 minutes later, the chase ended on Houston Avenue near the police station, and that's where the trio was taken. They reportedly had escaped from the Crockett State School five days ago by stealing a car belonging to the school's headmaster. Gubernatorial candidate John Hill said in Houston today that his campaign will definitely pick up speed after the Democratic State Convention to be held September 15th. Vice President Walter Mondale will be in Houston to campaign for Texas Democrats this weekend, but Hill says that Mondale will not be doing any campaigning on his behalf. As to how effective Mondale will be in campaigning for other candidates in Texas, Hill said his general acceptance would be good. I think that he's respected as a decent person. Uh, on some of his views, I don't think that they would square with the traditional Texas viewpoint on every issue, but I think that he, he's considered to be an able uh, a person. I certainly regard him as such, but I have not asked anyone to, to campaign for me. Hill says he plans to attend the Calvin Guest Fundraising Dinner, where Mondo will be the guest speaker this Friday. Let's take a break now from news. Let's get some news from the sporting world. Okay, there's going to be a fundraising dinner of sorts tomorrow night, Jan, for the Houston Oilers and the March of Dimes. We'll tell you about that and all the other sports coming up next. Kmart is your saving store where your dollar buys you more. When you get the chance, leave the right impression. Trax, the impression of quality and comfort. Trax cross-country joggers. Blue nylon and suede with white accents and durable rubber sole. 
Men's sizes or boys sizes 3 to 6, just $9.50 a pair through Saturday. Tracks, we're building a great name. Kmart is the saving place. I'm the owner of this great looking car. It's my new AMC Concorde DL. And you know, I didn't spend a penny extra for all this luxury. Smart. Individual reclining seats, plush interior, all standard. Can I pick a luxury compact? Smart. Now's a smart time to save on the successful 78 AMC Concorde DLs because they're selling at great year-end prices. It's America's new luxury compact. And its owners? Smart. smart. I know it sounds crazy, but all I wanted was a dining room. It's the first thing Kay told Red Carpet we wanted in the house. <laughs> We talked, and Red Carpet really listened. They understood what we wanted. So we didn't waste time on houses that weren't right. They understood about the size, about the location. And about my dining room. About everything. Even how much we wanted to pay. Red Carpet showed us houses we wanted to see. Talk to Red Carpet Real Estate. We listen. They really listened. Do another take. Clairol's new son of a gun with six heat and air settings from hot to cool. A crop's a safe! Cut! Plus 1,250 watts of power. A crop's a safe! Cut! And son of a gun is very lightweight. My arm is saved. Clairol's new son of a gun. Available at United Jewelers, Wilco, and Walgreens. Well, Bjorn Borg has been named the top seed in the U.S. Open Tennis Championships that start next Tuesday in New York. Borg has already won the French Open and Wimbledon, and he's going to be looking for the Grand Slam next week. Does he think that he is the best in the world? I think I, think I am. I don't know. I think I am that because I played against Villas in the French, and I beat him there in the final, and then I beat Cornish in the, in the final in Wimbledon. And uh, probably during those tournaments, I I probably play one of my best tennis I ever played in my life and we just have to see how it's going to go in the rest of the year too. It's two, two big tournaments coming up. It's the US Open and then the Australian Open in December. In the US Pro Tennis Championships in Brookline, Massachusetts, Corrado Barazzuti and Harold Solomon advanced on to the third round. Houston Oilers are in the process of cutting 10 players to get down to the 50-player maximum. They're not announcing who it is yet because Bum Phillips is not telling the players involved until tomorrow morning. Running back Rob Carpenter and Anthony Davis return to practice after preseason injuries. And if everything looks all right, they will play against the Saints Saturday night in the Dome. Meanwhile, tomorrow night is the big pep rally for the game at the Summit. With all the proceeds going to the March of Dimes, they'll have the Oilers there, the cheerleaders will be there, barbecue, and a lot of other goodies. Six bucks for adults, three for the kiddies. It starts at 6.30 tomorrow night at the Summit. It's all for a good cause, the March of Dimes. And then there is the Lydell Mitchell hassle at Baltimore. The star running back, and the team can't get together on contract. Mitchell has filed a grievance saying the Colts are racially discriminating against him. And the Colts say maybe it's better they get rid of Mitchell, and Mitchell agrees. For all parties involved, maybe the best thing is for me to be traded, you know, uh, since we can't come to that decision on it. Um, you know, it it's, uh, it's tough on me, you know, playing for an organization that uh, 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 perhaps you know, don't appreciate you. Houston Astros try to keep their home winning streak going against the Cubs tonight in the Dome. On the mound for the Astros will be Kenny Force. He's now 6-4 and four on the season against the Cubs' Dennis Lamp who was 5-12 on the scoreboard this afternoon. Phillies lost to the Padres. Giants got by the Mets. While the Blue Jays are leading the Tigers, they're playing in the fourth inning out there. American Tracy Calkin set her second world record at the World Swimming Championships in Berlin. She knocked two seconds off the 400-meter individual medley. The American's gold medal tally now stands at 14. And we should have some video from the Astros tonight coming up at 10, Jan. I hope they'll win. I do too. Three in a row. <laughs> well, all that was going on in sports today. I don't know what was happening in weather. Was much happening? Yes, there was, as a matter of fact. It was awfully hot in the weather, and we had a few funnel clouds around the area. Not real close, but I'll tell you where next. Pass the sugar, Gladys. Ralph, you ought to take better care of yourself and use a sugar substitute instead. I don't like sugar substitutes. You'll like sugar, twin. It looks like sugar, measures spoon for spoon just like sugar, and it tastes like sugar. I don't believe it. Believe it. It's on your cereal. Gladys. Ralph. 
Pass the sugar twin. Sugar twin. So much like sugar, it could fool you. From Kmart, the big direction in fashion this fall is the big top. Because you can achieve so many looks with this one great shirt, go casual. Put together the menswear look. Or slip into classic sports dressing. All in easy care cotton and polyester. Big Top set a little Kmart price. Just $7 through Saturday. It's a fashion direction worth following from Kmart. The saving place. Where in the world can you find all the majestic colors of the West? At your nearby Napco paint dealer, Napco has a world of colors. Where in the world can you find all the earth tones in a quiet forest? At your nearby Napco paint dealer, Napco has a world of colors. Vivid blues, pastel pink, brilliant yellows. At your nearby Napco paint dealer, Napco has a world of colors. When you need just the right color, you need Napco. Now that's paint. I went to Meineke Discount Muffers for a new muffer, and the prices were so low that with the money I saved, I went to the track. And I saw this trainer I know, and his jockey was sick, so he let me ride the horse, and I won the race. Well, one thing led to another, and now I'm the world's most successful 300-pound jockey, all because of the low prices on those mufflers at Meineke. You ought to go to Meineke Discount Mufflers. You never know. Mufflers installed from as low as $14.93. That's $14.93. No charge for installation. A real value. Hot, humid weather continues over all of Texas. There's a trough of low pressure in the western part of the state, basically from western Kansas down into the southwestern part of Texas. At the same time, high pressure well to the east of us, and that's combining to bring southerly winds and a lot of moisture up from the Gulf of Mexico. Shower activity over much of the area during the afternoon. At the present time, Galveston radar indicates a few showers, mainly from uh, north of Beaumont to Lake Livingston, and up north of that into the uh, East Texas Lakes area and over into western Louisiana. Earlier there were some showers to the southwest of Houston. They apparently have begun to dissipate and if they remain they're not very heavy. The heavier rains and thunder shower activity is in the extreme western part of Texas and also in New Mexico that in association with a trough of low pressure. The temperatures on the map indicate temperatures as of 5 o'clock this afternoon. They're all in the 90s with the exception of Texarkana in the extreme eastern uh, northeastern part of the state. They had 100 degrees at 5 o'clock, and Waco, between Dallas and Austin, had 101 degrees for the warmest spot at 5 o'clock this afternoon. Uh, temperatures and weather conditions should be about the same in Texas tomorrow as they were today. There was some worse weather in the country today. Let's look at the satellite picture moving uh, rather sequential cloud cover photographs from the hours of 6 o'clock this morning until, uh, rather, last night until 12 noon today. The worst weather was up in this part of the country. Now, there were thunderstorms that started a couple of days ago over in uh, portions of the Dakotas, and they began moving across Minnesota and northwestern Wisconsin last night. Today, they're in upper and lower Michigan. Duluth, Minnesota reported over five inches of rain in a 24-hour period, and now those heavy rains, as you can tell are concentrating over the northern portions of, uh, of Michigan and uh, also uh, in the past few hours they've developed in the northeastern part of Indiana and northern Ohio. Those clear skies in the eastern part of the country also indicate uh, something that doesn't show up on the satellite picture and that is very stagnant air because of the high pressure in that part of the country. The ceiling is very low pollution has nowhere to go. There were some uh, funnel clouds sighted during the day, an actual tornado at about 9.45 this morning, five miles south-southwest of Port O'Connor, and a funnel cloud at 3.55 this afternoon, just uh, to the north of uh, Port Arthur, rather uh, to the north of Orange. Neither of those did any damage, and we've had no reports of damage or injuries. The uh, low temperature in Houston this morning was in the 70 degree range as we look at some uh, youngsters who were swimming in the San Jacinto River under Highway 59. High this afternoon, 95. Right now at Intercontinental Airport, the temperature 94, downtown 91, skies fair, barometer falling, wind south, southeasterly, relative humidity 46%. No change in our forecast, partly sunny skies, lows in the low 70s, highs in the mid-90s with a 20% chance of scattered afternoon rains. Slightly choppy waters in Galveston Bay, two to four foot seas in the offshore waters. Again, partly sunny skies. Those afternoon showers will be with us again tomorrow. And if your lawn needs watering, I hope your neighborhood gets some rain. Jan. Okay, thank you very much, Ed. That's our news till now. Thank you for joining us. We hope you have a nice evening. This man captures sharks, flies them through the air, and introduces them to a new home. Dan Rosen and I visit with him tomorrow on Good Morning Houston. Hello, I'm Lauren Green. 
and it gives me great pleasure to invite you and your family to watch Bonanza. The saga of the Cartwright family. Tales of action and adventure. A proud and dedicated family caught up in the crossfire of an explosive and colorful era. Bonanza, the exciting Western adventure of a man and his three sons fighting for their heritage. Lauren Green, Michael Landon, Dan Blocker, and Pernell Roberts star in Bonanza. Monday through Thursday night at 10.30 on 13.